My brothers taught me about wrestling, but I taught them about eating. So he brought us to Pizza and it's all you can eat buffet. You get hot, fresh pizza. Thin crust or pan. Plus, there's plenty of spaghetti, garlic toast, and a salad bar. All for a super low price. Now, when you buy any small, medium, or large pizza, you'll get a 20 by 28 color poster of your favorite Von Erich. This week's poster features all three Von Erichs. Collect all four. For pizza out, it's pizza in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hello, folks, and welcome back to another episode of the Retroactive Sports Podcast. I am one of your hosts, Andrew Lenz, and joining with me is Mr. Johnny Townsend. That's right. I am here, and I am excited. It's a weird word to use for our topic today. Interesting. Yeah. Uh, fascinating. Um, man, there's a lot of words to use here. <laughs> I understand because... You know, people say like you have a, some people get a weird fascination with things. Oh, I mean, like true crime is a great example, right? Like true crime is huge, right? But really, if you break it down, it's just people have been interested in some awful things that have happened to other people. It, yeah, I'm very interested in the Von, what we're talking about, the Von Erics. That's like, right. The just, Von Erics. And we'll get into it. Uh, I'm, I think I'm just excited to talk pro wrestling too, especially classic yeah. pro wrestling stuff. Yeah, I think that this was one that we were talking about whenever we did pro wrestling. Yeah. Where where do we put it? Because we do the nostalgia funhouse. Go check that out. Yeah. Uh, and then we have this, which is sports. So where do you put pro wrestling? Is it more of a fun nostalgia thing, or is it a more sports history thing? And I think it depends on mm -hmm. what you're talking about. And when and I think if you're talking about the Von Erichs, I don't think you can talk about the history of pro wrestling without talking about that. Oh, yeah, they're a major part of it, for sure. And I know we're going to dive into all that. Uh, but I think before we do that, yeah. uh, let's talk about um, the other the other injury. Yes. Uh, at the time of recording, Damar Hamblin, who was injured on, during the game on Monday Night Football between the Bills and the Bengals, he's still in the hospital. Johnny and I send out our, our prayers to the family, and this is – Definitely, I know a lot of people have said it. It's getting repetitive. This is definitely the scariest thing I have ever seen since watching football. And I've watched. I know it sounds bad that I, I kind of like. I don't know. It's like I watched so much other things that I never thought that it would be this, and that's kind of why I like <laughs> did that. I've probably watched four or five guys get paralyzed. Yeah. Uh, We've seen Burke. horrific. We've both seen horrific injuries oh, in sports, guys. With the but, but most of the time, even the worst ones didn't feel life threatening. I mean, they were awful, yeah. they were horrendous, but this one's life threatening, and that's really, really scary. It, um, I mean, to bring it kind of up to pro wrestling in a way, it really reminded me a lot because it happened live, uh, with the Owen Hart uh, tragedy. Uh, you know, that happened live on a pay-per-view for the WWF slash E, and um, they kept going on with the show, uh, and a lot of the talent there didn't want to do that, understandably. I th feel that they shouldn't have kept on going with it, and I do want to say that I'm very glad that all the players and coaches and such pretty much said, we're not going to play the rest of this game. Yeah. Uh, I think it would have been a terrible decision, it's just don't do that. I mean, something horrible has happened to this. Who seems like honestly, he's young. He see, from everything that I've read about him, he seems like a really down to earth, uh, nice guy. I mean, one of the positive things that came out of this was he does like this toy drive for his local town, right, uh, in Pennsylvania. And uh, since this happened, it's brought a lot of eyes to it. And like, it's I forgot what its goal was to reach, but it's surpassed that by like millions. Yeah, it was twenty five hundred dollars, I believe. Yeah, it and was it's it's blown by there like a, like a race car <laughs> to help his mother get like new toys for her yeah. daycare center and stuff. Like that. He's he had been doing that since like he was in college, I think, when he played for I don't remember what team he played for in college, but he's a, uh, he's a public kid. 
He's a no, yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, so uh, seems like a really cool guy. Uh, you can tell from how everybody was talking about him that knew him. Um, as of this recording, the last thing I had seen was people were being positive. The doctors were positive. So that's a good sign. And we, like Andrew said, we're going to keep praying and sitting as many positive thoughts and vibes their way. Because if you love sports at all, uh, this is just scary, man. This is scary stuff. You I, never want to see this. I don't I don't care. I mean, this is how you knew this was a big deal because both teams just stopped, right? Yeah. Uh, I mean, the Bengals were just as affected by this as the Bills were. So, uh, man, it just shows you how fragile life is, really, because this is a, you know, to play in any of these pro sports, especially in today's age, you got to be a tip, top condition and shape. And this just goes to show that you, man, it's, it's, uh, Life is fragile. Do not take it for granted. Uh, that's why I'm really glad, glad that me and my friends are not afraid to tell each other ha- that we love them. You know, that's a big deal, like let people know. <laughs> uh, but yeah, we're sending our prayers and, and thoughts to all of them and the family. Uh, man, just scary stuff, Andrew. Uh, Owen Hart was the first thing I thought of when they started doing it. And I, I, I was watching the game with my youngest son and my wife and it was the first thing I said last time I saw anything like this was, was Owen Hart. Yeah. It was like the, that was the only thing that I could think the of. The only other, only other thing I can think of, and it's also wrestling related was Jerry Lawler, who um, literally had a heart attack on air too. After he'd had a match that night, uh, he kind of similar in a way, went into cardiac arrest. Uh, he had to get revived while there. Uh, the, I mean, he's credited all the, the great, uh, doctors and stuff they had on site there during that event uh that saved his life uh so it's very it's just scary stuff man good gosh uh but yeah wow um you know football's not even my main sport and i'm not a monday night football guy i was honestly getting ready to watch wrestling uh but that just started blowing up everywhere understandably because it's not something that happens all the time thankfully uh, but man gosh it's just so scary and oh man i really pray and hope he pulls through it was it, i my wife the next day said my son will never play tackle football again after i, I mean i understand right after I, watching that and he is slated to play flag football this saturday starting to have a flag football game and she was like does he want to play that and i'm, I'm like it, it's flag let's yeah let's see how he's feeling because he's 11 and yeah you know that that does play into the mind of things as well but demar central Ca- central catholic university of pittsburgh just that's a pit kid right there so because that's the route that marino took that's how i know that uh just get brother better guy get better yeah please please yes. all right so let's right. uh man yeah uh this is this might be a bit of a a downer episode everybody uh we uh we will try well i know i will because i just can't help trying to at least put some jokes in here and there but not a problem. uh but just know that uh, uh you might be in for uh what's it what am i looking for <laughs> just be prepared yeah <laughs> as uh might be kind of a as scar from blind king once sang uh be prepared <laughs> yeah it, it might be a little bit of a debbie downer episode yeah yeah like snl yes uh <clears throat> but all right von Ayers, i think or Buzz Wait, Clinton. From- <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. Uh, I think before we kind of started, I don't know why I started Italian there. Before we start the town, uh, the. Are you making fun of uh, the pop culture court lawyer, Frank Amarelli? No, he's one of my favorites. Okay. I just it's, an, sure. it's an homage. <laughs> um, yeah, please go check out that episode. Very proud of it. Uh, let's um, let's kind of set the basis for what pro wrestling was during this time. I think most people know what it is now, uh, or at least even if you don't watch it, you're aware of it. Uh, <clears throat> wrestling itself didn't really become like a, a national thing where like one promotion was everywhere until 80. really, and honestly, until really Hulk, Hulkamania started running wild, right? That's what really catapulted it. And that was in the 80s. Before that, it was way more of a regional thing. You had different, smaller uh, promotions and areas. 
Uh, I know in my area, I'm in North Carolina, we had a really big one. The Crockett's was huge. It was kind of its own thing. It was a big one. There's a big one in Memphis. There's a big one in Houston. And we're going to get to all these, get to that one, obviously. Uh, I've even, you know, your original neck of the woods, Andrew, up in Niagara, up in that area uh, has some history with it too. What do we have? We had Maple Leaf because of Toronto. Yeah. And then I think W, 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 W. F. Yeah, the predecessor <laughs> to uh, WWF slash E yeah. now was That's up it. there as well. And I think the Von Erics have a connection up there too, I think. I think. Yes, they do. Uh, so, but we'll get to all that. Um, so, anyway, so that's why you could have what they would do is each promotion would kind of have their baby face, aka their good guy. Thank your 80s Hulk Hogan. Uh, and they would bring in other people to have uh, matches with them, feuds, and that's how they would sell tickets, right? Like, uh, uh, but did that's uh, uh, so you'd have some people who would go like from town to town, basically, sort of, sort of like a night rider. <laughs> Andre the Giant is a great example. That's what I was leading to. Andre the Giant is a perfect example of this. He got uh, really famous because he would go from town to town in Canada. And he would be a, a literal attraction, right? Hey, uh, we would uh, like, I'm, I would just, we just use my area. Hey, Ric Flair's headlining this card. Oh, also, by the way, if you want to see Andre the Giant, here's your chance. And that's, man, that would get me in the door, right? Uh, yeah. Just to see him in person would be incredible. So that's basically the gist here. You have areas that, um, and they would send talent from place, to, like uh it's really fascinating to listen to a lot of the guys now talk about when they first got started that, you know, the guys that mean you grew up watching because their careers kind of started in this era and they would talk about how, Hey, we would have a contract here and it would run out and they would just have to go somewhere else <laughs> and start there. Yeah. It's, it, it's crazy. Tales of the territory is great. If you watch that on vice, I know they got a couple of free episodes on YouTube as well. But certain territories were also used as like a training territory. Yeah, sort of like a, I think uh, you know how baseball and basketball does it too. Have like, uh, well, I guess baseball calls them farm teams technically, but it's yeah, really right. like minor league. Like even Hickory, which is like the closest big town to me, and it's not even that. I mean, it's big, but it's not. It's no Charlotte, for example. Uh, but it even has the Hickory Crawl Dads. Uh, been to many of those games they're fun but they're a minor league team for the uh one of the major league teams in texas i can't remember which one but uh probably the ones that cheat i'm assuming the Astro. astros <laughs> that would be my i honestly don't know uh but yeah that's uh that's how a lot of these would would work and a lot of your bigger promotions would a great example of this would be in the 90s even uh you know ecw was kind of coming up mm-hmm. and they were in the Pennsylvania area themselves, but uh, they started having their talent kind of. They would they would grow them there, and then that talent would go on to one of the one of the big, uh, you know, WWF or WCW, and they were sort of a farm league in a way, or a minor league. I think the last big territory, probably other. I mean, other than you know the whole Jim Crockett promotions, what is that? Mid Atlantic, yeah. Uh, Smoky Mountain, yes. Jim yeah. Cornette, Smoky Mountain was like the last true territory where not only did they do arenas, probably not the biggest arenas, but they also did like what they call spot shows, and it's just like you're in some high school gym yeah. <laughs> or some rec center, what we would just consider pure independent wrestling today yes and and just like i mean and in today uh independent wrestling is obviously still around uh you know my area has it uh it's still very cool and you can kind of get to see some talent before they get if they, they might get big i've actually seen um in my area cedric alexander kind of got started here oh yeah and he's really good uh i wish wwe would use him more but uh he's I knew he was crazy talented. Just, that's just throwing him out for an example. But uh, yeah, uh, what that's kind of how, but it was really the, uh, uh, big independent wrestlers up in Western New York is Mr. Jerk Hawkins. I don't know if you. I've heard the name. Yeah, he's huge. <laughs> oh, yeah. He, he's he probably is. my favorite independent wrestler, Mr. <laughs> Jerk Hawkins. And, and it is a real wrestler. His name is Jerk Hawkins. Go check him out. Yeah, make sure you he's do. Awesome. Yeah. And get his uh, opinion on movies. Yes. 
<laughs> but I'm sorry for cutting you off. I just no, no, no. I, I don't got to name drop Jerk Hawkins whenever we talk about independent. Wrestling. Yeah. Oh, I get it, man. Uh, that's a that's definitely one we need to bring up as much as possible. I think I really do like him. Uh, so bring him up as much as you can. But yeah, so basically, especially back then, territories were major, and it was how most of your uh, names were going to get paid was through territories. And kind of think of a territory as this. This was also before, obviously, cable television. Yep. And so, but all these, most of these territories would have a wrestling show that they would show on TV. And if your area could kind of get that wrestling show, then you were technically a part of that territory. Basically, that's how it kind of worked. Yeah. And the the show is just kind of like a commercial for their house or live event yeah. as yeah. well. So it wasn't like how we, I don't think it's exactly how we look at Raw today, where we can watch Raw and we could just stay, keep on going, keep on going, keep on going, and we're not really missing anything. Yeah. You wanted to watch the show. So that way, when you got, if you were going to the live match, you knew what was going on when you got to the live. Yeah. As in today, in today's environment, even though WWE still does live shows, those are almost like tune-ups for the TV shows. Yeah. Where uh, it was kind of like the other way around. Back yeah. then. Oddly enough, it was. Yeah. That's how you made most of your money was to get people to actually come to your show. I think we got to talk and the Von Erics are not even the real name. And it's so weird. The, the way that this all came out because Fritz von Erich, the father, whose real yes. name is not Fritz von Erich. Their all last name are Atkinson. So well, here's a big shocker for Frick's everybody. Name. Most of your Frick. wrestlers' names are not their real names. That's a yeah. big shocker. Do you know Hulk Hogan isn't his real name? Oh, come on. I'm, I'm sorry to, to blow kayfabe here, but Terry's out there pretending to be Hulk Hogan. Please tell me Randy Savage is his real name. I wish. But it, you remember when you found that out? I I do. I, and my little mind was blown. I was like, that's not his real name? Are you kidding? He signed the autograph as that. Is that why Jack Foley and Mick Foley look oddly alike? Oh, that's a good the question. The jobber Jack know. Foley and Mick Oh, man, Foley. you might be right on something. Oh, man. Yeah. Oh, crap. Good question, man. But, oh, wow. Uh, this is, the, this is the, the man that, you know, obviously started the Von Eric family, but Jack Atkins senior. And he had a gimmick because most wrestlers <laughs> had gimmicks back then. All right, he sure did. Uh, so a he, gimmick was kind of your shtick, your thing. Yeah. Uh, think uh, who's a, who's a great example. Undertaker. Great example of this, right? Uh, his shtick is obviously he's kind of like the dead man. He's sort of a, uh, and he came out with Paul bearer, right? Uh, that was his gimmick, his shtick. Uh, but um, <laughs> this is one that you definitely cannot do uh, today with you yeah. know, what Fritz chose by the name Fritz von Erich because he was wrestling 60s, you know, I think what, 50s, 60s. Oh, he debuted in 1953 and he was trained by Stu Hart and he played. Yeah, Stu Hart. <laughs> and he was a heel, which is a bad guy. Yep. Uh, he, I don't even know how to say this properly. Uh, he played a, a Nazi. A Nazi. He was a Nazi. He was a Nazi. That, that was his character, which was a Nazi. Uh, because think of it this way: this is in the you know the fifties and sixties, and any way you can get heat, which is getting people to boo you. That's basically what heat is, uh, and that's what you want if you're the bad guy. That means you're doing your job. If you're getting booze, that's what you're supposed to do. And uh, it's man, that's easy heat, right? Just say you're a Nazi. I mean, most you know, I'm most guessing people ninety nine point nine 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 percent, and I'm going to keep on going with nines. Like, yeah, like, we don't like that guy, right? Yeah. Like, what I've yeah. learned from the internet, there's always that one guy that would be like, "Leave him alone. Why can't he do that?" <laughs> yeah. But myself, yeah. Johnny, and everybody else with the right mind would be like, "Hey." Nazi guy bad. Yeah. Boo. Boo Nazi guy. I mean, Indiana Jones fought them for crying out loud. Captain America fought them for crying out loud. So yeah. uh, he literally punched Hitler on the cover of his own book. <laughs> so, uh, but yeah, so that's what he did. And uh, who knew that he would just start this uh, family that would become synonymous with pro wrestling. But he did. 
we can't mention too. He was in a tag team with his kayfabe brother, his fake brother. Oh, yeah. Here's Hold another up. shocker. Most of your, a lot of your wrestlers who quote unquote were related were not actually related. Did you know that Kane and Undertaker weren't brothers? <laughs> you know what kind of upset me? I'm not going to lie. Is when I found out that Edge and Christian were like real brothers. Like they played that so well. Well, and that's because they did grow up together basically and they are best friends like in real life. So they could play that. But I know what you mean. Yeah. But the Hardy brothers are real brothers. Does that help? <laughs> It it, it it eased the pain a little bit. I still well, remember when I found out that the Andersons, with Arn Anderson being one of my all time favorites, weren't actually related. That that ma- literally broke that, my little kid heart. <laughs> that okay, that that one did make me mad when I found that out. When Oli and Arn were not yeah. brothers, because they could totally pass for it. <laughs> if there was a tag team where they looked exactly the like, then I was or Bart or Bart and uh, Billy Gunn. Yeah, not real brothers, man. So sad. It is a lot of sadness there. I do not like. Oh, let's get away from the sadness. Oh well, yeah, it's going to be kind of hard. Well, we're going to go right back to it, really. Uh, but Va- the Va- uh, but he would uh, he would have children. He would have uh, how many kids did he have in total? Uh, he had f- six six kids in total. And uh, uh, let's go ahead and just rip this bandaid off. Uh, all but one uh, would meet a really tragic ending. Yeah, and we'll, we're going to get into that. There's only one remaining who uh, lived, uh, but before we do that, even when they were young, they had tragedy in their family, right? Yes, uh, because um, I'm trying to find the name so I don't get it wrong. Jackie, are you talking about the first brother? Yes, the firstborn. Yeah, uh, was only six years old in 1959 when he was shocked and drowned by accident. In a puddle of all things. I mean, that's so. Who could even? That sounds like, and I'm not making light of this at all, but it sounds so wild and out there, like a Final Destination type thing, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, but uh, man, how sad would that be? I couldn't imagine uh, losing a, a, a someone, a, a child, even or a brother or sister of that young age. That's just that's that's heartbreaking. But it just starts. I mean, that's how this. That was just kind of a sign of things to come. Sadly. Yeah, it was uh, coming home from school. They had a trailer because, like you said, you moved from territory to territory to territory. And they had a trailer. They were living in Niagara Falls, New York. And I guess a neighbor was doing electric work and left something off. Uh, Jackie was coming home from school. He touched it, electrocuted himself, fell face first, like you said, into the snow. And that's when he that's when he drowned. Yeah. Only six years old. Uh, But it wouldn't it wouldn't stop there. But the other. Uh, Von Eriks, that's again not their real last name, but yeah. they would actually follow in their father's footsteps yeah. and one by one kind of get into wrestling. Yeah, he he kind of didn't want him into wrestling because Kevin... Well, that, that, that happens a lot, right? I've noticed a lot of um, the fathers who were wrestlers, and this is going to happen in a lot of careers, I've noticed, not just wrestling, but they're like, I don't know if I want my... Because they know all the bad stuff they had to go through on top of all that. Like, it's not easy. By any means, because Kevin mentions that that day kind of shook his father, that there was a little bit of anger, didn't show it, but there was anger and he wanted people to be angry as he was. And it was also kind of the beginning of where you don't want to be. It, it's kind of like now you, you don't want to be the employee. You want to be the boss. So, right. If you're going to do wrestling business, you want to be the promoter. Yes. You yeah, want to yeah. be the guy putting on the shows, <laughs> not in the show. So that's when he uh, was able to purchase a WCCW World Class Championship Wrestling, and that was in the Dallas, Texas area, Dallas Fort Worth. Yeah, which is not too far from where you are now, right? Yeah, it was so oh, man. What so I heard about the Sportatorium because yes, you don't cold talk about it. Yeah, any wrestler that had to do it, and then all of a sudden I found out they tore down the Sportatorium. And I was like, oh, man. man, I just wanted yeah. to like go and see it. I didn't want to go inside so much just to see it. Yeah. Just to, just to see like it in person and, and touch it. Cause that's, I don't know. That's, that's how weird I am when it comes to this stuff. I want to see the, oh, it's historical, man. It's historical. I want to see the weird things of sports history. Like I, yeah. we have AT&T stadium. You can take a tour. Yeah. 
if somebody was if the sportatorium was still up and was like, hey, do you want to go take a tour of ATT Stadium or do you want to go take a tour of the sportatorium? I'm going to the sportatorium. Yeah. yeah. I want to go and I want to go on a hot the hottest day possible because I want to hear what like Stone Cold and Booker T and all those guys were talking about how there was like no AC, no nothing, and you just yeah. so I, I want to get that experience. Yeah. Yeah. Like the Lakers when they played the Boston Celtics in, in the 80s. <laughs> they would turn off the air on purpose. <laughs> they would never do such a thing. Oh, yeah. Sorry. Sorry. <laughs> like we said, he did have he did have other other sons. Uh, I'll just list them in order. Uh, after Jackie, there was Kevin. There was David, Harry, Mike, and Chris. So that that's all them in ranks of age. And like I said, he didn't really want him into wrestling, but they kind of just got into it. Kevin got yeah. into it because I never, I never understood this, how it works out. But Kevin got into it because he tore up his knee and it was shot and he couldn't play football anymore, but yet you can wrestle. That happens a lot though. I've noticed, right? Like a lot of, yeah. they, they come from other, when they come from other sports, like, well, I can't do this sport anymore, but I can go wrestle. But have you seen like wrestling is just as athletically involved. <laughs> Yeah, I, uh, I, would I never mention understood a that name. Either. I would mention a name that was injured in a sport, but I don't want a wrestler uh, B H <laughs> to uh, to upset him at all. I don't oh, wanna... a certain uh, William will say uh, <laughs> may have got into the WCW power plant because he used to be uh, a football player for I think the Atlanta Falcons, wasn't it? I think yeah. it was. Yeah, yeah. I don't want. I don't want. Uh... Somebody. We don't want to ruffle any. We don't want to ruffle any uh, Bret Hart's. <laughs> God bless you, Bret Hart. God bless you. Yeah, never change for real. Always do that. It, it makes me so happy. <laughs> so, oh man, but yeah. One, so he had a lot, a lot of sons. I mean, that kind of yeah. makes sense, though, right? Like, um, if you're close to your parents growing up or whoever raised you, uh, their interest as you're a kid get. I mean, you kind of. It gets, what's the word I'm looking for? Like when I was growing up, my dad uh, loved NASCAR Mm -hmm. and we're going to do an episode on 90s NASCAR at some point. And that got me into loving NASCAR because my dad did. And guess what? My favorite driver was also his favorite driver. It's a big shocker. Uh, But that's just kind of what happens sometimes, right? It's sort of like, well, my dad loves Mark Martin. So guess who else loves Mark Martin? This guy. But the key thing about his sons though is they... What made the Von Erics work in a way, what made them so beloved is they weren't just the Von Erics. They each had their own kind of personality and their own style. Yeah. Kevin never, mm. he, he wrestled in boots like a couple of times. He said he hated it. He was the barefoot guy, super athletic. The, and then you got David, who was more of the technician, you know, worker, yeah. wrestler, very technical. And then you had Carrie, who was just like the body, just all yeah. all muscle, great body. And those were the three main Von Eriks. And it was it, it, in a lot of your uh, tag teams or um, groups in wrestling. It's good to have people who, whose expertise are in different areas, to kind of make you more well rounded as a team. And that's what they did. Like a lot of your teams will have somebody who's. Um, the quote unquote the worker, right? The one who can do all the great spots and stuff. Then you have somebody who's the talker because they just happen to have that charisma and talking kind of comes easier to them. Uh, and they can, you know, the free birds are a great example, right? Uh, of this, yeah. Uh, and we're gonna we'll probably talk about them at some point, I'm sure. In this, I don't think you can talk about the Von Erics without talking about the free birds, exactly. The free birds are just uh, an example of this as well. Um, where they were well rounded team because they kind of had uh, each person in the team excelled at one thing and the other one complimented that. I've actually talked to you know people when I talk about sports in this area, like when I actually do go out, they do still mention the Von Erics to this day. I get it. And it's a major part, right? That's why in my area, you know, Ric Flair is always going to be mentioned no matter what. Yeah. Like they still talk about the Von Erics, how big they were. <laughs> I've watched a couple of their matches. I'm very into the whole WCCW. Like I said, I'm very into the Von Eric. So once you, you got to know everything, you wanted to see them wrestle. Yeah. And the way that audience pop and pops means loud, you know, if you're not up to wrestling term. Yeah. The way that audience just pops. 
is like absolutely amazing. It's a, yeah. it's not a very big building. I mean, there's probably a thousand, two thousand of and that's probably, but it's filled. Back. It is filled. It, it's filled. And these people want the Von Eriks. And it's amazing also to see at that time, you see people pushing notebooks and pieces of paper into the ring just to get the Von Eriks to sign autographs. Yeah. Cause that's how huge they are. They would sell out the cotton bowl and everything else. Because people wanted to see the Von Eriks. And as you mentioned, whenever you got a great good guy team, you got to have the bad guys in the in the Freebirds. And they just mesh so well together yeah. in each aspect of what of how they did it. And there's I don't it's got to be one of the greatest feuds ever in yeah. wrestling so, history. I mean, wrestling is made up of rivalries that made wrestling. And that's one of them. One hundred percent. It's uh, I mean, every I mean, I mean, this isn't anything right. I mean, Batman. If he didn't have great villains, would he be near as a big pop culture icon as he is now? No. No. Batman needs Joker and Riddler and all of them. Uh, and same thing when wrestling. Stone Cold uh, got humongous, I would dare say, one of the biggest names in pro wrestling ever because of Vince McMahon, right? Uh, them going back and forth. Who didn't want to Stone Cold stun your boss when he told him so? <laughs> Even though what's funny is I remember going back and looking at that uh, not too long ago, and I had forgotten – that the reason Stone Cold was mad at Vince McMahon was because Stone Cold had been legit injured, and I mean legit, it wasn't a it wasn't a kayfabe injury; it was a real injury. And but the storyline was Vince McMahon was like, "Hey, we need you to kind of calm down, take some time off, and get healed." And Stone Cold stunned him for saying that. So <laughs> Vince McMahon was the bad guy for saying, "Hey, please don't hurt yourself more." <laughs> what a dick, you know. <laughs> Not very nice, Mr. McMahon. Yeah. <laughs> I think that's the point where you stopped, well, not to get off subject, but you stopped looking at him as Vince McMahon, but as Mr. McMahon. Yeah. And then also at that point, I finally realized that he owned the company. Yeah. <laughs> I did not know that until the Attitude Era. I always thought it was, uh, what is it, Jack Tunney would come on? Yeah. The yes. president yeah. back yeah. in the 80s. Yeah. But let's... Uh, kind of it's it's hard because but this is also the, the von erics are also in a time where no most of your fans didn't know the secrets of pro wrestling like we no. do now no. it was all as that one guy says you know that one famous <laughs> internet guy says it's real to me damn it right uh but to them it really was uh there's a very famous story um that i remember when i was researching one time for a different podcast uh, Bobby Heenan was one of my favorite uh, guys, right? And he was, uh, and he uh, at one point got so much "quote unquote" heat uh, that people hate him so much that a guy in the crowd brought a gun and shot at him. <laughs> <Sorry>. <laughs> There's been many cases I've seen. They've showed ones where I'm a big Jim Cornette guy. I know that sounds <laughs> that's not a good thing in today's wrestling, but where he had to wear bulletproof vests. And yeah. stuff like that, and it, what tales from the territory? Those guys talking about people pulling guns out on them, and yeah, because uh, it was all real. It was real to these people. Yeah, stab because there was there was no. Uh, we talked about this. Uh, if you go back to older nostalgia funhouse episodes when it was known as Let's Talk with No Politics, okay. Uh, Madden, you may uh, I can't even talk. You, I am Matt talked about it like that's when wrestling was great was when people thought it was real and didn't know yeah. anything behind it other than what they saw in the ring. And the Von Eriks were this all American family full of athletes, guys that were in shape, but they all had, they body. all had a certain type of charisma too about yes. them. Uh, and David, they, were, they, they were easily likable. Yes. David even got the nickname, the yellow rose of Texas. Yeah, that's, wow. That's pretty huge because the only other person I know in any sports that has anything named Rose Wise is you got Earl Campbell, who's the Tyler Rose. But that's and just it. <laughs> yes, and Pete. <laughs> it, but he's just the Tyler Rose. He's just the the Rose of Tyler, Texas. Where yeah, David is the Yellow Rose of Texas, and that is where uh, the first. Might as well rip the band-aid off first tragedy strikes right there with David Von Eric. Yeah, a, a lot of your wrestlers, even today, it still happens today. Uh Japan ha also has a huge wrestling culture. They love it over there as well. And I mean, 
gosh, as of this recording, um, they just had a big reveal over there. Uh, what's oh, what was her name in WWE? She was a big name. Oh, Sasha Banks. Sasha Banks. Sasha Banks. Yeah, uh, just debuted over there, right uh, in Japan. Like as of this recording, like a couple days ago. So uh, it still happens today, but it was really, really prevalent back then. You would because um, you can make a lot of money going to Japan and doing a tour of Japan as a pro wrestler. I mean, Mick Foley talks about it all the time. He did it. A lot of your name, Chris Jericho. I mean, a lot of your names did this. Hulk Hogan even went over there, right? Yeah, that's, uh, that's how a lot of them I heard made their money was yes. Japan. Uh, Bruiser Brody was huge. They said Brody yes. was pulling in crazy money by go, just going over to Japan. Yeah. It's funny that I mentioned Bruiser Brody because as we talk about David Von Erich. Yes. So, uh, a couple days before he was supposed to go over to Japan, David Von Erich, for for his show, he wasn't feeling too good. But Fritz, being the old school guy that he is, you never missed a date. You had to go. Yeah. And he ended up going over. He ended up passing away due to, uh, how did they explain it? That his like, intestines exploded? Yeah, he had a, it's called, I'm not going to pronounce this right, enteritis. Yeah. Yeah, you're you're you probably did better than me, but that was February tenth, nineteen eighty four, at the age of twenty five, very young, and very very young. And David Von Erich at one point was slated to face Ric Flair for the NWA Heavyweight Title. Yeah, and actually become it. They said he was out of the three, he was the most likely to you know be the one that's going to win the title. They said he was he was more of the complete package out of carrying. Uh, Kevin, yeah, what you wanted back then. Wrestling was a lot more technical, a lot more sports than what it is today. Well, a lot of your teams too. Uh, one of them kind of becomes the breakout. It always kind of happens, and most of them. I mean, Shawn Michaels and and Marty. You know, that's a great example. I mean, I Shawn Michaels went on to do great things, and Marty now is kind of embarrasses himself every time he says something public. So. <laughs> you, ruined, you ruined my day. I'm sorry. I love the Rockers. <laughs> I love the Rockers. The but Rockers. Marty doesn't anymore. I can tell you that much. That's why I don't like the Young Bucks that much because they just remind me of the Rockers. And I'm like, what you? Well, know? I don't like them because they ruined the super kick. <laughs> That's all they do. Yeah. Make it special, man. <laughs> I could see you listen to Jim Cornette too. Uh, I'm just, that's the one thing it really. <laughs> I love pro wrestling. I still love a lot of it today. Most of it, I would dare say, I do love today. Uh, but it's just different. Um, man, I think the athletes are better today. I will yeah. say that I, they're much more athletic. Can do. I've seen some incredible stuff that I couldn't even think of to do, uh, let alone let alone do it. So that they they're incredible today. But um, and I still think some people still do this right. But there's storytelling seems to become a lost art sometimes in the ring. There's a story you tell in the ring, and yeah, a lot of times that gets lost. I think not but, just spot, uh, spot, 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 spot. Yeah. Spot. But there is controversy around David Von Erich's death, and what do you know? Ric Flair is involved in it by mentioning Bruiser Brody, who found David Von Erich, uh, passed away in his room, states that Bruiser Brody removed the evidence from a drug overdose. I've heard that happen in a lot of different other cases, too. Yeah. Pro wrestling related, sadly, but uh, where somebody was found and stuff was found with them and they kind of get rid of that stuff. But even the, even the uh, autopsy came back. Cause that was the big thing is a lot of people are saying that. And Fritz said, whatever comes out is what we're going to put. And it and Bruce himself would go on to have a tragedy. Yes. Right. Like a terrible one, which one. I'm sure we'll get to at some point on this show. I mean, and in the history of the show, I, it's another one I would like to cover. But, uh, man, there's some wild stuff's happening in wrestling. <laughs> so the, it, it did come back. It was ruptured, ruptured intestines. And to show how big David Von Erich was and how big the Von Erichs were in the state of Texas, during his funeral, they had to turn people away from the church and set up a large like movie theater screen outside with speakers so people yeah. could be a part of the funeral. That's yeah, how man. big the the deaths affected Texas. Well, I mean, if you think about this, it's not. It's just when, when you're a kid and you're looking up to these people, they become a major part of your life. I dare say, like it, fandoms, when you're a fan of something or someone, it becomes a kind of uh, a part of your identity in a way. 
Um, so, I mean, I still, you know, like the pro wrestling death that really, uh, besides the Owen Hart one, yeah. uh, I would say, uh, I'm trying to think of some of the ones that really, like Roddy Piper is a great example of when, when he passed away, it was kind of unexpected, and I legit cried, and I was an adult at that time. That's because I grew up loving Roddy Piper. <laughs> He was a major part of my childhood. Uh, I I grew up a Hulkamaniac when I was a kid, but that led me to be like, man, I know this guy's a bad guy. This Piper guy's a bad guy, but I just can't help it. I just like hearing him talk. <laughs> it, it's weird because I my first memories of actually liking a wrestler wasn't Hulk Hogan. Who was it? I was a big JYD guy. I was down with Oh, him. oh I, he ruled, it, though. I get I it. He was awesome. I can't tell you a match. Remember a match that he was really wrestling, but I remember my whole thing was I try and do that stupid dance as a kid. I do remember <laughs> trying to do that. And I was have that charisma, man. It's that charisma. I was that voice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You doing this yeah. young y'all dog. <laughs> I, oh, he was awesome. Yeah. I, that was that was my guy. It was JYD. And I just yeah, I get it, man. I totally get it. And now I hear all this stuff about him. I'm like, oh geez. Okay. But I'm back to that. So the Von Erics have always been a team of three. Like, how do you, how do you do this? Well, you still got two brothers. You got Mike Von Eric and you, and you got younger Chris. Chris is not quite old enough yet. Cause Chris was born in 69. Nice. <laughs> I don't know why I did that, <laughs> but <laughs> thank you, Johnny. You're welcome. <laughs> I think this isn't this where they because they did a lot of crazy things too after 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 David passed away they brought in uh yeah I think this is when they brought in Lance von Eric the fake the fake cousin yeah well I mean you gotta you gotta realize I mean like you like you already said um you know David was such a huge star uh major part of their of of the the wrestling there, not just of the Von Erics, but like what he meant. That's a huge person to replace, and you got to try to do something. But I guess that didn't go over well. <laughs> I think they kind of see, and through. it's not going to. I mean, just think of um, any time in any pop culture thing, it gets big when somebody's known for that, and they get replaced by somebody else. And it's not the fault of the person replacing them, but they're just not. It's it's just really tough to quote unquote get over in those shoes right uh, i think uh i'm going to somehow compare pro wrestling to family matters when harriet was replaced i remember being like man i don't hate this new harriet but where where's my harriet or you know? the, or the mother on fresh prince of bel-air i'm actually yes. i'm actually jumping ahead of the timeline they bring in mike who mike didn't really want to wrestle from what i yeah. understand yeah and he didn't really want to wrestle and he had a horrific injury in Israel, I guess the Von Erics are huge in Israel. Like if you watch a lot of stuff, they do a lot of things in Israel. And I mean, a lot of the, you know, a lot of the countries ever, I mean, around the world, a uh, lot pro wrestling. Um, was it you who was telling me the Yokozuna thing? What's that? Was it you? Um, Yokozuna had already passed away and WWF was going to do a show. It was one of the middle Middle Eastern countries, I think. Oh, I could have my facts wrong. Was it you? Was, tell me this. It, yeah, I was telling you that they asked they asked for Yokozuna to be there. Yeah, and and you can't because he's he's gone. He's passed away. So yeah, yeah, because the Undertaker and Kane and stuff did the tribute show. They did a like a tribute GoFundMe thing for the family. And yeah, the, I well, the Undertaker do it. He's one of those. He's the guy that can do whatever he wants. Oh yeah. <laughs> Nobody's going to tell him anything. And he did, he did the show. Like he was like, I'm going, I'm doing the show. But Mike, Mike gets a separated shoulder and he gets, what is it? Toxic shock syndrome. Yeah. In, in there. And he's not doing too well. And I love this. I love this story behind it. His fever got up to 107, which is insane, by the way, that's basically your brain bullying itself. Yeah. And this is at the time when he had this. This is when they were like, yeah, let's bring in Lance Von Eric," which didn't work out. So he had he had this, and I guess they read a Bible verse about, you know, saving all good men. Yeah. And this is this is from Kevin. And, you know, a pastor slammed the Bible on the table and said, you know, 
this is your word, God, if you mean by it, you're, you're going to do, if you mean it, you're going to do good by it. And then all of a sudden he just came, he came back, but they, Kevin did notice he was a little bit different, probably had some brain damage and everything else. And he just wasn't, wasn't the same. And the land, like we said, Lance Von Eric didn't work. And then on April 12th, 1987, Mike left a suicide note for his family and went up to a lake and he uh, drank alcohol and overdosed on sleeping pills. And he was young. Yes, he was. Early 20s, I think. 23 years old. Yeah. Yeah. Sad, so, man. Yeah. But it wasn't in there for the Von Eriks. No, 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 it, it wouldn't end there. Uh, yeah. Young young Chris got involved, and Chris is probably the most interesting Von Eric because, from my understanding, Chris should never even been in a ring. That's what it sounded like to me too. Yeah, he had asthma, and the asthma medication made his bones real brittle. Uh, he never, like the Von Erics, if you look at their heights, like Carrie, uh, Carrie was considered short, and he was six two. I David was six seven. Kevin was six three. I think even Mike was pretty tall. I mean, these were big, like at least six, two. Yeah. Big dudes. And he never, because Fritz was six, four, two sixty. Those are, those are big boys. Yeah. Those are big boys. Chris, I don't want to say run to the family, but he just never got to that size. He was five, five, 175 pounds. Yeah. Continue. Your brothers are over six, two, two, 50 plus some of these guys and it just never really worked out he was very limited asthma brittle bones you know just anything could just snap anything and then his he was very close to mike too so that led to a lot of probably problems there too because they're very close in age i think they're only four years apart but uh chris was found outside on September 12th, 1991. And he was found uh, by his brother, Kevin. God bless Kevin. And he suffered from a self-afflicting gunshot wound. And Kevin reiterates this one too, where I guess Chris called him and was like, hey, can you bring that VCR back? And he's like, Chris, it's like two o'clock in the morning. I'm not going to do it. And he went up there. He saw Chris. Chris reassured him he wasn't going to shoot himself. He wasn't going to do anything. Kevin left him. When they came back, Chris was dead. Yeah, man. So and he was, again, was early 20s, I think. 21. Man, oh, God. Yeah. That's a that's a mm. big in my book now. I never thought I'd live to hear to say that, but I wish he was still with us. So it's that. We're, I don't even want to. I was going to do want to say, it, but there's two Von Eric brothers left. There's Kevin and Carrie. Mm-hmm. Carrie ends up getting into a horrific uh, motorcycle accident. They said he was leading a very fast life. Yeah. Uh, he did win the NWA championship at a tribute show to David Von Eric from Ric Flair, but then he lost the belt back to him later on. And he got into a bad car accident. And to the point where it mangled his leg, like his whole leg, his ankle. They thought he thought he was going to lose the whole thing, didn't they? Yes, they did. They did, and I guess they had a fix. And Kevin, this is all stuff I love watching. You know, Von Erich documentaries. I, I don't. That sounds morbid. I love finding out more about the Von Erichs. And I yeah. guess the ankle was pretty well fixed. And then Carrie was like, "Man, I could go for a cheeseburger," and he stepped on it and it crunched out again. And that's when they had to take they had to take his foot. And the shocking thing about it was, is he wrestled with a prosthetic, yeah, yeah, with a prosthetic foot. And they were, and Fritz made them all promise anybody within that circle that knew about it, they were not allowed to tell anybody. Yeah, I guess he showered with his boots on and did all this stuff just to hide it. And at this point, WCCW is pretty much done for. And he does go. This is when I first saw any of the Von Erics as a kid. He goes to WWF where he becomes Texas, the Texas tornado. Yeah. Yep. And they say they changed his name because there was the ultimate warrior at the time and they were looking to get the road warriors. 
So Vince McMahon didn't want all these warriors because Kerry Von Erich's nickname was the modern day warrior. Yeah. But he goes into WWF. Uh, he does win the Intercontinental Championship. I still remember that because he beat Mr. Perfect and talk about a heat magnet and Mr. Perfect. <laughs> so happy. So happy that he beat Mr. Perfect. But he also has strategy. He gets into another DWI. He goes and asks, he's, and he's going to jail. And he asks his wife, he said, will you wait for me? She says no. Uh, and he shoots himself in the heart with his father's 44, uh, 44 Magnum that he actually got for him for his for Father's Day. And he shot himself at the end of his uh, family r- ranch there. Yeah, and he, he was in his early 30s. Uh, man. So that leaves just one. Yes, and that's Kevin, who is still with us. Thankfully. Our, yeah. our Fritz ended up passing away of uh, lung cancer. That spread to his brain, and even Kevin mentions that he thought about killing himself at one point. That he I mean, won- think of all he's went through. My God, you know, uh, good Lord, it it really reminded me of the movie Saving Private Ryan, right? Where um, the gist of the movie is the reason they're trying to find Private Ryan is because he had multiple brothers who were also in World War II, and they had all been killed, so he was the last remaining one. Yeah. Uh- he talks about going into a pawn shop, getting a gun and the pawn shop owner, you know, all he said to him when he was leaving was he said, I love you, Kevin. And that was good enough for Kevin not to shoot himself and go back yeah. inside. And yes, again, that's why you should, if you care about somebody, let them know. Mm-hmm. You never know what you could be doing. You could be literally saving somebody from themselves. Yeah, and he mentions also to his father when the cancer started spreading to his brain, told him that if he was a man, he would he would also, you know, he he would shoot himself and just get yep. out, get it over with. So this was a very tragic family. Kevin is doing, I think he's doing doing well from what I saw. I yeah, from what I from the uh from what was that show called? The Dark Dark Side uh, of the Ring. Yeah, I think they did a Von Erich's thing, and that's the one I'm thinking of. They talk to him and he's like in hawaii i think it is Mm -hmm. so it's beautiful and he just kind of likes to he just lives his life goes outside stay you know just kind of enjoys nature he has um children who are in wrestling now i think or they were one or the other i can't remember but uh yeah uh, i think for everything he went through uh his outcome was is way way positive there's actually three Von Erich still wrestling. Uh, you got Kevin's two kids, Ross and Marshall Von Eric, Ross and Marshall Von Eric, and Carrie's daughter, Lacey Von Eric. So that's that is the sad, tragic story of the Von Erics. And it's it's sad, but it's it I mean it lot of people call it a curse. Not every, yeah, it's curse and it shows you fame fame isn't everything. No, it's most certainly not. It's not for everybody. There's aspects of it that I think a lot of people don't realize when they're searching for fame. There's parts of it that's not so positive. Um, It's really, uh, it might be a really great thing to be well known, but it can also be a really bad thing to be well known at the same time. It can be both. And there is a movie, I believe, coming out in 2023 called Iron Claw because that was bits of the move. Yeah. Was the Iron Claw? I believe it. They, they said it was coming out in twenty twenty three. I know they started shooting it. Uh, actors: um, Zac Efron. I'm trying to see Maxwell Maxwell Jacob Freeman. I don't know who half of these people are. You got to tell me a show because I didn't get a chance to look up hot uh, young actors again today. <laughs> but <laughs> but there is some there's. I'm guessing some names if you're younger who would know who I they are. I mean, I know Zach Afron. Yeah, that's one well, of the names again. That's not what I recognize when you said him. I know who Zach Afron is and I know who Maxwell Jacob Freeman is. You might know him as MJF. Oh, he's in this? Is he in it for real? He's playing Lance Von Eric. What a better role than the most that's perfect. hated Von Eric ever for That's perfect. For MJF. Yeah. That is perfect. And then they got uh 
Oh, Jeremy Allen White, he's playing Carrie. He might know him as Lip from Shameless. Never seen that show. Heard of it, never uh, watched it. He's he's in the bear. He's the new or he stars in the bear. Did they cancel this show? And what else was he in? He was in movie forty three. Ever see movie forty three? I thought nope. I got bad reviews because it's just off the wall. But most people probably know him as Lip from Shameless. But Zach Efron got way too big to play Kevin. Yeah, he's he really buffed out. <laughs> <laughs> and Harris Dickinson is playing David, and I have no idea. Yeah, I looked up some of these names, and I, I do not know them. Yeah. But that I, doesn't mean anything. I don't know a lot of new things. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we listen to our nostalgia uh, funhouse uh, yeah. night rider. That's why, that's why we do shows talking about stuff from the past, because uh, if something's trending on Twitter, there's a 90% chance that I don't know who it is. <laughs> <laughs> I know who's playing it's funny I didn't know who this name was who is playing not not Pam Atkinson where is it but Doris and it was funny I had to look at her picture and now I'm like oh I know who that is but I can't she played Lynn in semi-pro <laughs> that's how oh. I know it yeah yeah I've seen that yeah. movie yeah yeah uh Dr. Abby Lockhart from ER I'm aware of that show yes yeah so or her that's... That's how I know these people. Is I just go, ooh, they're from that show. And then I yeah, look about, oh, she played the mother and liar, liar. Oh, okay. Yes. Yes. Now, now, yep. now, now you've helped. Yes. But that is the tragic story of the Von Eriks. And it's, man, uh, uh, is there any thing compar- comparable to this besides fictional stuff I've said? Like, <laughs> uh, like it's man. I know there's been families who've went through a lot for sure, but this is like just extreme tragedy after extreme tragedy here. This is, this is like you said, one after another. And I think a lot of it was trying to keep the machine going. Yeah. Well, and I know there was a big part, uh, excuse me, listening to like uh, wrestling podcast. Yeah that the Von Erics were so big and Vince was doing this with everything, but Vince McMahon would put them on, you know, WWF TV, like the tapes. Yeah. Because that's how big they were. And he really, he really, really just wanted that territory. So he could have, so he could have the Von Erics, and, you know, he finally got them. But at that point, and this is like 80, probably when he bought it, 82, 84 before Hulk Hogan, was in the play and it makes me wonder that if he would have got the Von Eriks because a lot of people have messed around with this and some what ifs if Carrie would have been what we know as the Hulkamania today that's always tough these what ifs like that because Hulk kind of came at the perfect time for both himself and the WWF like it just was just you know just luck of the draw that he hit that big um, cause he started out being a, a quote unquote bad guy, but he was already sort of turning into the Hulkster when McMahon got him, but McMahon just tuned it up to like 11, as they say. And that's what really kicked it off. But he was already kind of heading that way. I think, I think he, I think Hulk Hogan would have still been a big name for pro wrestling nerds like myself. Like we would have known who he was if he didn't become the WWF, but obviously going to WWF, I mean, the dude, did Mr. Nanny for crying out loud. You are such a big Mr. Nanny guy there. I am. Suburban Commando is better. I'm a Mr. Nanny stan. What can I say? <laughs> He's a mark for Mr. Nanny, everybody. I have a giant mark for Mr. Nanny. I mean, it's Hulk Hogan in a tutu. You know, nothing um, better than that. I'm yeah, I'm a Suburban Commando guy. <laughs> I really... <laughs> All right, one th- this is another idea for a future show of this a future episode for this show. The Hulk Hogan uh, it's a much lighter affair than what we talked about today. The Hulk Hogan uh Gawker lawsuit. Oh jeez. Yeah. I just listened to a podcast about that. We have to talk about this. Oh, it's so Wasn't that with the whole Bubba the Lunch Lunch yeah. thing? Yeah, yes. Yeah, it's uh, it's really really great. 
Uh, but yeah, so the Von Erichs, a major part of pro wrestling history. A lot of a lot of what ifs there for sure. Um, but man, what a tragedy! What a tragedy! Now, are they? Are they? They got to be at least the top five, maybe one or two greatest wrestling families of all time. Oh I mean, yeah. Do you? Would you put them over the hearts? Not for me personally, because the hearts were a bigger deal for me. I would. I think it depends on where you're from, doesn't it? Like if, if you're from if you're from Texas, a hundred percent, I guarantee oh. you, most people would say yes, number one family for sure. Uh, but I'm in North Carolina, so uh, I would put the hearts over them, just because I'm. Even though they're Canadian, I'm just more aware of them. Mm-hmm. Uh, the Von Erichs would definitely be up there for sure. I'm trying to think of other. I mean, you. Fam- have- the Hardy, I mean the Hardy, the Hardy boys are big here, but that's because they're from here. Uh, and there's only like, there's just two of them. <laughs> I, yeah, like uh, the only other wrestling fan I can think of is like the Ortons. Yes, yeah, maybe the DiBiases, even though Ted Junior didn't wrestle that long. It seems like. Well, I mean this, I mean the Von Erichs and the Hearts are le- legit families where multiple family members got into the business. Yeah. And uh, most of these is just like father and son or brothers who get into it, it and it kind of stops there. And the sad thing is, is I think the Von, I don't want to say anything bad about the hearts, but what I've seen the, the Von Erics, even though all the strategy, they seem to be the most stable. Like I watched that Teddy Hart documentary. That guy, yeah, that guy, I, have, I haven't seen that yet, but I've heard about it. Yeah. Uh, it seems like outside of, Owen and maybe Natalia, most of the Hart family kind of just how can I ride on this Hart Hart family name? Yeah, I'm mean, which I mean I understand. Yeah, I, I get it, but uh, uh, no disrespect to the hearts. I love the hearts. Do yeah, I do too? Yeah. Uh I mean, wow. Well, I'm a Von Eric guy though. I get it, man. I get it. To hundred percent, I don't think honestly, I don't think you can get wrong with either uh, being fans of either one. Just uh, be prepared for a lot of sadness if you dive into the history of, yes. of honestly either one. Yeah, we we scratch the surface. There's Dark Side of the Ring. Uh, there's a great documentary on YouTube about them if you want to find out more. Yeah, that is like we said. And there's again the movie coming out. I don't know how accurate it'll be. A lot of these movies, you never know with that stuff. But yeah. especially when it's talking about pro wrestling, which in itself. Isn't always accurate. <laughs> the Young Rock is completely not even on anywhere where it needs to be. Oh man, that's why I stick to Mister Nanny. There you go, because that is that's true life right there, based on a true story. Yeah. Uh, well, that is it. Thank you for listening, and we will be back in two weeks with another episode of the Retro Active Sports Podcast. There are two ways to get color pictures of wrestlers like the Von Erichs. Pick up your free poster in Sunday's Times-Herald or try to take a few from their family album.